Simon has given me the shortest wooden spoon in history. Look at that. What, what would you use that for? I what? Well, I take the butter and the sugar, cream them until it's a Tuesday, <laughs> and then slowly add the eggs one at a time between solstice. No, just do it this. I'll just do this. No time. The butter I've got is room temperature. We are in summer. Hello my darlings and welcome to another one of my videos. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to make some really simple sugar flowers for cupcakes. A lot of people want to do fancy cupcakes, I know they've been a really big deal for quite some time and I think a lot of people are quite scared on how to make their cupcakes look like they've come out of a nice tea shop or cake shop or patisserie. So I'm going to show you a really 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 simple flower to make. There are so many cutters, so many different types. As a professional baker myself, I have hundreds of different cutters and different mats and moulds and goodness knows what, and colours and lusters and blah blah. But I'm going to tell you the easiest one to do, and it's using this. Now, this kit, which I will put a link to in my description, is the best kit for making the most impressive flowers the easiest and the quickest way. Um, there are lots of other flowers you can get and you can mold them and then you do this to them and then you press them and then you... But this I find every time I've ever used this petunia cutter on a cake, people are blown away by the flowers. And they're so, so easy to make, so I will show you what I do. Now, because there's so many cupcakes around these days, you'll find that the specific type of icing you need to use is far more readily available than it was when I started baking cakes professionally. And you could even get it at Tesco. I'm pretty sure Sainsbury's and probably even Waitrose and Asda might do their own one, but I know Tesco's own flower paste is called modeling paste. Uh, great for making flowers and other delicate shapes, but it is traditionally called in the business flower paste. But again, modeling paste as well as fine. There are some well-known suppliers that do different types of modeling pastes that are more expensive. I know that the brand Renshaw do lots of different colours already done for you. This is fairly new for me as well because I think in the old days we just all just had to colour them, hence the gloves. But now Renshaws do a whole fantastic range of modelling ones, including gold and silver. Um, so they've got the metallics as well, which is really, really helpful for you. Um, but just because this is going to be for anybody who wants to do this at home, I'm using Tesco's. I just think it's absolutely fine. You only get it in white and you have to colour it. It comes in this bag which is sealed. Now I have to warn you, when you finish using your paste, you must wrap it thoroughly. I usually use cling film, but one thing a lot of people don't know, cling film is actually porous. It may seem waterproof when you use it for certain things, but over time air does get in and this will become rock hard where the air has gotten to it. The reason this is used to make models is because it's soft when it's fresh like it is now in this little little pack I've just made this pink but when it hardens it's harder than fondant so it will keep its shape and it will look fantastic and it'll be fairly delicate but you know just a little bit of careful handling it's absolutely fine so I usually wrap it in clean film, yeah, clean film and then pop it in a food bag take out as much of the air as possible and tie a knot in it and you stand a better chance of saving as much of this as possible it's very unlikely you'll use the whole pack but the wonderful thing about this being a supermarket brand is it is a, probably about half the price or even less than a professional baking brand uh, such as Renshaw but again if you just want to go straight for the colours and not have to actually mix it yourself Renshaw is a really great opportunity so as I said I have thousands of gel colours. I'm using today Sugar Flare Cherry Red. This is, I've got other dyes on top because I've used it when I've done other cakes. Um, and this has currently got blue and yellow dye on it because obviously I was doing a myriad of colours for a specific uh, birthday cake probably. But um, I think it's really lovely pink. There are a lot of pinks around. It's up to you what you choose. Um, I find this gives the best fuchsia pink when you want a real shocking pink. And it also gives one of the nicest pale pinks. Some of the other colours, um, the pinks tend to be a bit dusky, which is really trending at the moment. Um, some can be a bit mauve and some can be just a bit grey and weird. So it's kind of what you want to decide. You can get gel colours in supermarkets now. I know um, regular brands have them. 
um, but I'm just going to give you the link to what I usually use so if you want to you're welcome to choose it it's not that expensive a tiny bit goes a long way I stuck a toothpick in the top of this by about I think about three millimeters in and just took a tiny tiny bit and popped it on that much of icing and got that beautiful pale pink color so I'm going to show you two ways of doing these this way I've got icing all over this already just ignore me it gets messy this way I'm going to do uh, pale pink flowers and I'm also going to try and I'm going to do these first white flowers and then when the white flowers have dried a little bit I'm going to sprinkle on some of this gold luster dust now um, this is edible so it is edible luster dust by Sugar Flare. So this can be put on little icing accoutrements that you want, not too much though. Certain luster dusts are for cake decorating purposes only. So if you're going to put on models that you're not going to eat, um, because obviously some of these have metals that you shouldn't really be ingesting. But if you get one that is edible, it should be fine to eat. But it is your decision and your choice what you decide to do. Keeping them plain white as well is just as beautiful. I just want to give you the option. I also have my trusty brushes. And for the centre of the flowers, just to make it pretty, I have some pink pearls for, you can get little ones anywhere in any supermarket. They sell these kinds of sprinkles. These are pink. And I ordered these ones online. Again, I'll put a link in the description for you. These are large sugar pearls by PME, white ones. Sometimes it's nice just to put one in the centre and that does the trick. So again, I'll show you both ways. I promise you, it looks like a lot of stuff, but it is actually easy. I'll also be using, don't panic, oh, this is leaking already a bit, this is not good. I didn't close this properly, so that's my fault. Um, edible glue. Now, um, in order to make the pearls stick into the center of the flower, I need to use some glue, and obviously it's got to be food safe glue, because if someone wants to eat the sugar flower, they can. So this is edible glue got this from Hobbycraft, you can get it online or whatever, again I'll put the link to it in the description if you want to get it. And I am wearing gloves because from years of experience of doing cakes, when you get gel stain on it, it stays for a long time. So I'm just going to turn this pan off because it's a bit, a bit cold in here so you might feel, you might hear a change in the sound, it's just because I've just turned the fan off. Because it's a bit warm, we're finally getting a bit of summer. Totally dating this, but it doesn't matter, who cares. Anyway, back on with it. So, first thing we do, I mean, I've got, this mat has just got sugar on it, so it's not going to be the end of the world. Uh, I also have this. Now, you don't have to use this. You could just use ordinary bit of, sprinkle a bit of icing sugar. Some bakers like to use cooled flour because they find it less sticky. I personally always use icing sugar. Again, I'll put a link to this, Ooh, excuse the squeak, in the instructions. And it's just basically a little bag you take the top off, you put icing sugar in, and you can dab it on the cutter. So, my cutter, sorry, my moulder, actually, this is my cutter. So, what I'm going to do is get this pink, this is not going to be very good for me, I should have taken this off. I've already done it with the dye, so I've shown you what it is with the tiniest bit of pink in. And now, I need to show you, right, so, as you can see, this is quite pliable because I've needed some colour into it. When you first get flower paste, it will be hard, it'll be hard. So you've got to knead it a little bit and get it a bit sticky and workable. Because I obviously put some pink in this, it's like a kind of tough and sticky marshmallow. So what I'm going to do is roll this out with my little rolling pin. These are so handy. Using a big rolling pin could be a bit of a nightmare. But a little tiny dinky one when you're doing flowers and decorations it just does the job and it's brilliant and i normally have a special mat to roll this in which it doesn't stick on unfortunately don't have that in the minute so this is what that does if you've seen that just pat 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 bit of icy sugar it's a bit much but i just want to spray it on here in the hope that it doesn't stick too much don't want too much icy sugar though because it will dry the icing out right i've managed to roll this out quite flat so I've got my, these are just ordinary dining knives that you would have for your table for your breakfast. It is a very sticky day today. Now this is the only problem with doing this in the winter, no problem really. In the summer when it's sticky, moisture and sugar don't mix so it'll get quite sticky. But I still, I don't know if you can see that, 
managed to get that really quite thin very very thin roll you wouldn't be able to get that with fondant it would have fallen apart so with this being this thin and a little bit tough it means I can get a really nice thin flour so I've got my cutter and I just cut out of shape you've got it in there pop that out so I have that there so then I get this a lot of icing sugar on both sides but not too overdone you can see there I just simply place my flour evenly on the flour press so you don't have to push it in you just rest it on top turn this over now a little word of advice when you tip it over don't squeeze by the middle squeeze around the edges the middle will do its own job you squeeze around the edges very gentle pressure just a little light pressure maybe do a couple to see how they go and when you open it voila beautiful veins in that petunia petal there now we are not completely done using my trusty dinner knife just to gently pick up the corners gently pick up the corners ease it out and then you'll find it comes out now you might find there are a couple of holes in the middle because when you pushed it down that section goes in quite deep don't panic about that that's going to be totally hidden when we place it onto the cake in the buttercream and it'll be hidden when we put the center in just so it has the little pearl to dry in the middle now normally i do have a variety of different implements in my huge baking room of stuff um, to dry these petals on i have various little pots that you can buy there are little dishes that are also sort of like palettes for mixing colours, but I usually put those there as well. But just to show you how easy this can be, oh, I've got a sponge. It's a sort of sponge that you'd get when you get sort of hi-fi equipment, but you can buy it and it's got all these little dips and roots. You just put all your flowers in there to create like a movement of the petal. I'm going to do this on an egg box, an empty egg box. Now, obviously it's had raw eggs in and it's wooden, so I'm not able to clean it. So I have covered it with so many layers of cling film so that there is no connection between my flour and the egg box because obviously eggs have been in there and they're not the most hygienic of things. So it's fine for you to just place this in there like that. And what it does is it means it's going to dry with just that little bit of shape and a bit of movement so it's not a completely flat flour if you can see that there. And that will... I mean normally I would leave these for I, if I was doing a, a cake for a client I would have put them I would have done these maybe a day or two in advance at least uh, for bigger models bigger flowers I'd have probably done it a week in advance so it really gets time to dry out we're really going to be putting these on cupcakes so literally doing them now and then I'm going to make the cupcakes and then I'm going to let them cool and make the buttercream then I'm going to put the buttercream on and pop these on but because I'm putting them on a buttercream swirl that will actually hold them so we don't have to panic about them not being rock hard but it is nice just to let them dry a little bit now now a word of warning this has already started to dry since i've been talking so we have to crack on and be really quickly there are things you can buy which i do have but i haven't got to here at the moment which is like a um a blue folder with plastic sheets and what you do is you make you cut out all your flowers slip them in the plastic sheets and cover it and that stops the air getting to them keeps them supple enough so when you want to mold them into the flour mold, they're still soft enough to take the flour mold without cracking. Because they this flour paste dries super quickly, which is what people want really, because when you've done a model, you you know, although I give it a few weeks sometimes, for something like this, that you want to have it done fairly quickly, because I'm gonna be making the cakes today, icing the cakes today, it's really, really useful just to have these ready. Now, it's just really, really useful to have them all ready and just have them to grab and use. So what I've done is I've quickly given that a bit of a squish and the stickiness has come back, which is what I want. So temporarily, the cling film will keep it temporarily squishy enough for the next time I need to use it, but it won't keep it squishy enough for you know if you tend to go back into it about a few months time or a few weeks time even by tomorrow it will have probably 
be uh, quite tough um, if I'd left it in the cling film. If I've left it in cling film and in a bag, it should be fine. And also a little handy trick that I use. I find that Trex, which is a vegetable oil, is incredibly good if you, I, I use it actually because it's used to stop um, flat paste sticking to any surfaces that you've done if you're going to do a big model or stuff like that. Sometimes we grease it with flour, sorry, we grease it with Trex vegetable oil and that means it will still dry but then you can slide it off and it won't stick later. It's absolutely brilliant. So using it to go rub all round here creates a really great waterproof seal before you put it in film, before you put it in the bag and then you will find it lasts a lot better but it doesn't last forever. Once you've opened that seal you know it's pretty much you've got maybe a few months left so I'm not gonna make you sit through all of these this one's a bit ripped I took it out a little bit too heavy-handed doesn't matter it doesn't matter just try and push it back together pop it in and when we put it into the uh, cupcake it'll be absolutely fine we can paint over it we can luster dust it we can add little embellishments and all sorts and it will be okay so I'm gonna get on with these and I will come back to you in a bit when some of them are done okay so that's the last pink one I've done. I'm not going to do any more pink ones because I'm going to show you the white ones now. Now with the white ones, obviously, don't need to have my gloves on because this is not going to be um, messy, hopefully not. But I will just show you, this is the Tesco flower paste and it's really, it's kind of tough when you put it off. It's like, a, it's got a kind of nougat consistency. It's, yeah, it's sticky and it's, it's rock hard, but once you've kneaded it and moulded it a bit, it becomes, you know, much more like a, a firm plasticine, if you remember that. It's not as squishy as Play-Doh. Play-Doh is a lot squishier than this. But it's, um, you can feel it's got a little bit of strength in it, even though it's quite stretchy. It's, it's got a, like if I put it quickly, it just tears apart. So. It's got that ability to be a bit, oopsie daisy, to be a bit stronger. So what I'm going to do with this one is just get some icing again and roll this one out. Again, remember it is quite sticky. As I said, for those of you who would prefer to use corn flour, absolutely fine. Um, I think most bakers actually do use corn flour, but I've just always used um, icing sugar. Although admittedly not on such a sticky day as today is. I would normally check the weather um, even before you do it. Because honestly, some cake makers, I mean, I don't do it as a, as a business anymore. But when I did, oh God, I'd have all sorts of air conditioning units going and fans on me. Because heat is no friend to the baker or cake decorator, shall I say. So there we go. That's actually quite nice there's some bits that aren't so great but it doesn't matter i'm gonna actually just cut around them so here we go usual cutter i'm gonna cut out all the shapes that i need and just pop them on the side and these white ones i will decorate them when they've hardened decorating them now with any of the brushes no matter how soft the brush will wipe away some of the veining that this fabulous mold has put in so we need that to sort of set a little harder so when I do brush it with some gold luster dust later it'll still have that definition that we really love to make them look realistic. So just one more here, there we go and uh, that again gets rolled up, wrapped in some cling film for now and then next I will wrap it in a bit of oil the uh, Trex um, and again the Trex doesn't do anything bad to it it couldn't the next time you go to use it need all the Trex in it's absolutely fine it doesn't affect the flavor or the texture at all and I can guarantee that because people are always just scoffing into the flowers my kids go mad for the sugar flowers there's slight different taste to fondant but they obviously just baby sugar so what I'm doing I'm just going around the edges and not really pressing the middle 
you're gonna get a hole sometimes anyway oh this one's just got stuck again still fine still nothing wrong with that oh, i shall put that to dry here and i will go through the rest and see you when i finish doing the white ones see you in a bit so what i'm going to now show you is what i would normally do is wait until these dried a bit more and put them in but i will just show you now i'll just move this out of the way now this has already started to go it's already started to set so if you can see it's still a bit wobbly it's still a bit sort of you know delicate but it is starting now to get that set with that movement in it i don't know if you can see that very well but you'll see it on the cupcake and there'll be a photo at the end i've got these flowers here and i've got this edible glue the edible glue will dry quite quickly as well and it's very sticky very clear and i'm just going to take one of the flowers this little pink one here at the front but if you can see that i'm just going to pop a little blob of glue in the center that's it and i'll pop a little blob of glue in that center and i will pop one in the center of that white one there i hope you can see that so what i'm going to do for the white one uh, i'm going to just pop in a little white pearl if you can see that in there there's the little white pearl in there and for the pink ones what you can do i usually use oh, it's open, three of these just drop them in the center and then i just get a paintbrush and arrange them into a triangle so they create let's see if i can show you that it's not very clear on here and they create a little triangle in the center it's not very clear at the moment because it is still soggy and wet but once it's dried you'll see the three little pink pearls in the center and it just it's just you know so you can have a, a choice of whether you want to have um you know um one just one center bit um or not now i know as i said the reason why i'm doing the three pearls is because quite often in supermarkets You'll only find, I hope you can see that, okay? You'll only find the little ones in sprinkles. Um, I mean, nowadays they do so many things like unicorns and um, midnight mix and, uh, gosh, what else is there? Um, little stars and all sorts of things. And whatever you fancy putting in the centre is up to you. But because you could usually already get, I mean, you can only get these in white in most supermarkets or sometimes silver, sometimes gold, whatever. Just three little ones in the centre of these petunias will be absolutely gorgeous. And then at the same time, let me grab a white one that's just drying. So I'll just show you. A little bit of edible glue. Pop that in the centre. And you can see where, I don't know if you can see actually, that's got a hole in it. Because this uh, petunia press has got quite a deep centre. But little pearl goes in the middle. You'd never know. Absolutely hidden. So I'm going to just carry on with the rest of these. And then I'm going to let them dry for a bit. In the meantime, I'm going to go off and make the cupcake recipe. And um, once I've done those, these should have dried enough. Right, so my lovely K-Mix is back out again. I love this thing. Um, I'm going to hoist it up. Ooh, excuse the clunk. I will be using this beater for my K-Mix, which is awesome because it scrapes the sides down for you. So although I do use a spatula because I'm a bit of a belt and braces girl, this is absolutely fantastic. Just clicking it in for making sure, sure it just, you know, it saves a lot of time. Uh, if you don't have one of those and you're using a mixer or even a hand mixer or even just beating by hand, uh, the points I tell you to double check, just make sure you've got something like a spatula. I mean, you can use a wooden spoon. Simon has given me the shortest wooden spoon in history. Look at that. What, what would you use that for? I what and anyway it's just too weird but you can still scrape with a wooden spoon but because there's sort of the area you'll be scraping is only going to get a bit of curved bit it's going to take longer spatula my trusty spatula is fantastic because nice long scoopy doopy bits and therefore it gets all the stuff down just to save time and i'm all for saving time so talking of saving time let's get cracking so i've gonna have i'm gonna use my method a lot of people are like, oh, take the butter and the sugar, cream them until it's a Tuesday, and then slowly add the eggs one at a time. 
between solstice. No, just do it this. I'll just do this. No time. Flour in the bowl. In fact, let me take the uh, bowl out so you can see. Flour. Flour in the bowl. Butter in the bowl. Apparently. A bit left. So you use my trusty spatula. Um, might use a wooden spoon for something. Don't want to get a complex. Right, so butter in and sugar in. Now, this is self-raising flour. So it has raising agents in. Therefore, we don't want to let it be kept wet for too long because as soon as it gets moisture, it starts to bubble and fizz and pop and all that lovely air is starting to come out and make your cakes rise. And we don't want it to rise in the bowl. We want it to rise in the cupcake case. So first things first, I mix this in my blender until it is literally just combined. No beating, waiting, watching, blah, 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 just pop it in. Close it, slip it on, mix it up. You're doing an awesome job. And I love that it's got this cover because I always put it on too fast, too quick, and it just goes everywhere. So, are we nearly there? We're nearly there. It, re it really doesn't take long. Sorry if there's going to be a lot of noise. I might cut this bit out if it's too noisy. So that has literally been, I think, what, about two minutes, three minutes in the mix there? If you do it by hand, you know, as soon as it's combined, if you do it with a hand whisk, same there. But you can see, in the, oh, it's a bit heavy at this angle. It is like that, sort of like a thick butter, kind of like you're getting ready to make biscuits. We aren't. So what I would normally do is pop this back under here because I like to scrape the um, beaters because there's a lot of cake mix stuck on there and we need this all mixed in so as best as possible making a mess as usual because you know maybe if i didn't so here we go i'm just going to scrape down the sides and get this all together you can see how it is now just like that now just a little bit of egg i'll put just a little bit of egg just to loosen it um again you could just put put it back under the beater for a second and this will just mix everything into loosen it. But I thought, well, I've got the spatula right here. It's not that difficult. So there we go. So I've loosened this up. So it's now what they would call, I think, a dropping consistency. And it's all scraped away from the edges. So I know that what well, I mean, I could even just do it here, to be honest. Well, that might not, because I'm lazy. Um, I'll see how it goes. See if I want to put this elbow grease in or not. So yeah, if I was to do this in the mixer, which I probably am going to do actually because it's more than I realise. I'm just mixing this around so everything is caught up. Because the last thing you want to do is go and get this ready for your cupcake cases and find a great big blob at the bottom that hasn't mixed in. Oh, and also vanilla. So these vanilla cupcakes, you can make them orange with orange extract. You can make them salted caramel. Any flavourings and extracts you find, to be honest, if you can only find flavouring, then so be it. But I do think extract does really put the paste on flavour. It's a personal choice though. Also, budgetary choice, because flavourings are usually cheaper than extracts. But, you know, I'm a baker, so I've always got them in the house. So I'm just going to whiz this on for a minute or two. I love how this starts up slowly, so it really just sort of gently says come on now we're gonna have to stop mixing and then it suddenly slaps to pieces it's fantastic that's it we're done cake mix done how easy is that I'm not having to stand there and add an egg bit by bit and and it works this is how i cook all my cakes man i have won awards for my cakes and this is how i cook that award-winning cake honestly i mean you know don't get me wrong if you're a kind of, hey, I want to cream the butter and sugar kind of person, I'm not going to judge you. If that's how you prefer it, it's just, you know, for me, it's about speed and taste. Taste is the most important thing. I mean, obviously it's got to look nice as well, but this will do the trick. Now, I use really big muffin cases. I'll show you what I use. These Dr. Oatka muffin cases. I have no affiliation with Dr. Oatka, so they're not paying me to say anything. This is my genuine uh, recommendation because 
when you do put buttercream on cakes, there's an awful lot of buttercream that tends to go on the top. And when you have an uneven buttercream to cake ratio, you just kind of get a good side of buttercream. And I have to say, my buttercream does taste a bit like a vanilla ice cream, so people kind of like it anyway. But I do think if you're going to get the right size of cake, you can use this. If you don't have muffin tins to put them in, these are now being sold in supermarkets. I got these from Tesco. Again, not affiliated or anything like that, just telling you where I got them. And these don't need a uh, these don't need a muffin tin. You can just pop these on a baking tray. They are slightly larger than the muffin cups. So you're going to get, again, an even more hearty amount of cake. And there's <laughs> nothing wrong with that. But um, again, as I said, if you don't want to have to buy a muffin tray to put all your cupcake cases in, um, you try to put these on a baking tray, they'll just all go, <clears throat> and they'll all go flat and go out and be really weird and stuff. This sturdy mofo. Uh, will keep your cakes upright and fabulous until you need them. So again, it's a personal choice, whatever you want. Now, I saw Americans using these and wondered, is this really worth it? Americans ice cream scoop? Muffin? My God. Oops, sorry. Smash that. My God, what a revelation. I've said this in my other cupcake recipe, and I think it was the muffins. They're so good. You get perfect even amount. You can do a bit of a afterwards, which of course is mandatory. You have to do that with tongs on a barbecue uh check they're still working um and it just scoops everything out and it makes life so much easier now i'm not entirely sure which one is best i'm gonna use the medium one and if it's too big then i shall go down to the smaller one but if i can try not to make too much of a mess i'm gonna pop this in here Ooh, look at that straight in see this is what i love about it it just kind of you know you've just got it go it goes and that's what I'm looking for. That actual amount in each cupcake case is kind of like half full because it's going to be quite fluffy. I use, now I think I was going to say, I use margarine. A lot of people use butter in their cupcakes. Again, absolutely fine. But from personal preference, I find margarine, as well as being dairy free, so if there's anybody problems with milk, these are going to be absolutely fine. Obviously, don't put the buttercream on if they do. But I find it gives a much lighter sponge and um, it really, really gives it airy. Butter in cakes, it just gives us, it's very slight dense sort of feeling. If you ever had Marks and Spencer's Victoria sponge, that's a butter cake and you can kind of tell it's sort of a firmer, a firmer set of bubbles, does that make sense? But I like the fact that if you're getting a little cupcake, you're getting a little fluffy, bundle of yumminess. I'm doing this in a really weird way. Sorry if you've got an OCD and I'm doing this in some random pattern. Um, but yeah, so this gives a really light cake. And I think for a cupcake, especially when you've got that high um, buttercream ratio, that having a light cake really just helps to make the whole thing not feel like you're, you know, going to sink as soon as you've eaten one. But, you know, it's a personal thing. It really is a personal thing. Um, again, if you're going to use a margarine, make sure you check it is one that you can bake with, because some you can't, and that would be a real disaster. So, whatever you decide to use is your choice. I will put what I use in the instructions, and you make it your own. Make it your own, as Louis Walsh says on X Factor, which I haven't seen for a thousand years. Anyway, so I'm just going to pop a little bit more on that one, and it looks like I'm probably going to get... Uh, oh, she says making a mess everywhere. Probably, this is 12, maybe uh, 15, 16 cupcakes out of this. I will let you know at the end and say how many it makes. Now, the reason I'm doing it half full, I would normally do it a bit fuller. If I was going to do something like a muffin that wasn't going to have much buttercream on top or something, I would uh, put a bit more in. But because I'm going to be doing buttercream roses on these later, um, I need to have some space in the top to neaten them off because I'm going to show you how a professional buttercreams their cupcakes. It's so easy, you'll kick yourself like, of course, makes sense, why didn't I think of that? Seriously, it's one of those things that's just kind of like, oh my god, I've been doing it wrong all this time. So, you know, hold on, hold horses, and I will show you with this how we do it. And, uh, Forevermore, you'll be a professional cake maker. Well, people will think you are anyway. 
So I'll finish this and when I'm done, I'll come back and we'll pop these in the oven. So hold on, I shall be back in a bit. Hello and welcome back to the woman with the messiest apron in this house. Um, I did get a bit of uh, cake mix on it and I did toast some so if it's on my face and I can't say it. I apologise, I have not got my glasses, but anyway. It tastes great, by the way. So I've managed to get out of this, that's 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. <laughs> nice round number. Um, doesn't matter. There's always when you're going to need to taste. Sometimes some one goes a bit weird in any way. So I'm going to pop these in the oven now. And then I will probably put them in there for about 20 minutes. Check on them. Just to warn you that the reason cakes fall is not because the oven door is opened. It's because the temperature drops suddenly. So if you open your oven to check these are okay, and you open the oven really slowly, and then you just get a skewer. I've got one of those long metal skewers I use for grabs, so I use one of those because they're like extra long, so I can just open it just a tiny bit and just wheedle that in through the middle of a cupcake, take it out. If it's dry and the end is really hot, then they're ready. Um, if there's any little bits on there or it's a bit sticky, you'll know, and then leave it for another five minutes or ten if your oven's a bit pants like mine. Um, do not open the door, bring them out, whack them on the side and check them that way because they will sink when you put them down if they're not ready. When they are ready, just simply take them out, pop them on a cooling rack and leave them to cool and then you can have a look at the buttercream recipe, which I will be doing in a minute. Um, so we can get ready to top these. So they're gonna go in the oven and I shall see you in a bow. So I'm going to show you how I make my buttercream. Like I said, it's a bit thicker than other people's buttercream, which is usually more of a fluffy frosting. The reason being is I just love the consistency. I think it gives a really smooth, gorgeous taste to the cupcake, whatever cupcake you decide to use. And um, it really holds well for a particular colour technique that I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you how to do normal roses and a specific technique that I love doing that it just looks so striking with an alternative colour. So, let's put the recipe. Simon, who is a husband and the oldest person in the house, runs around scooping up <laughs> the sugar air like some sort of fish out of water. Um, but because it really does get quite, quite dusty, so just to warn you, it'll be really quite delicate and slow with um, icing sugar. Unlike flour that, you know, has a bit of weight and gravity behind it icing sugar is just so crazy so if you don't have a mixer with a guard this one does um start really really slow maybe even mix it by hand the butter i've got is room temperature we are in summer Woohoo! so that means that the butter is actually melted if this was winter i might have had to give it a bit of helping hand but as it is the summer it is just perfect so just my butter and icing sugar have gone in there i'm also going to at this stage uh pop in some vanilla and just going to put it on the butter there so it goes and mix in with the butter. I'll put the exact amounts down there, but you know, I've done this a million times so I can guess to me. And I'm just going to put this on to mix. Now, again, this fabulous mixer starts slow anyway, even if you whack it up to full, this will start slow. If you didn't and you were doing it by hand, either with a hand whisk or beating it or with this, start slow. Otherwise, you're just going to find yourself covered head to foot in icing sugar. Even with the guard, it will spew out the sides. So I'm just literally, I'm, it's just switched on. But the power is just getting to it. Because I just need the butter to mix into as much of that icing sugar as possible before it goes absolutely crazy and covers everywhere in sugar. So it's doing it really slowly, it's taking its time. I can even open it a little bit and I'm not getting completely gassed by puffs and stuff. But I can see it smells starting to come together, and that's what I'm looking for. It's going to be less fluffy, less airy and powdery. There we go, brilliant. I can see it now, all together. That is bang on. Now, some people will probably mix it a bit more, just to make sure that the sugar's kind of melted into the bus cream. And that's fine. That's just what people do. And I have absolutely no problem with it. For me, though. The more you whisk it, the more air bubbles you get in. And it's kind of like a bit of a, a balancing act. So I don't want too many air bubbles in this. Again, if I made it a bit lighter and a bit plappier, I probably wouldn't have that bite. Just this is my buttercream. If you don't like it, absolutely fine. No problem whatsoever. But 
everybody who's ever had it loves it. So this is why I show you these things. I wouldn't show you something if people didn't go completely crazy for it. Otherwise, what's the point? You know, saying like, yeah, this isn't bad. People do really like it. Why don't you make it? That's not gonna happen. So this is, uh, I'll show you how stiff it is. It's quite stiff, very stiff. <laughs> Um, so yeah, you will get a bit of a workout with this when you pipe it, but it is um, the sort of texture yeah. I love. If you find it too thick for you, add some water. I've got here just in case I wanted to, but it's absolutely fine. And add it half a teaspoon at a time. I know that sounds bonkers, but honestly, a quarter to half a teaspoon at a time, you'll be astonished how thin that makes ice cream sugar. It really, really, really will. And it's best just to go quarter to half each time. I think that's not the thing. And you probably will find maybe a teaspoon, maybe one and a half to two max before it starts to get really, really sloppy. So as I said, for me, this is perfect. I love the fact it's got all those little specks of vanilla in. If you want to change the color, you could just put the color in with the vanilla and that would have beaten it up into whatever colors you fancy. I've made all sorts of colors and I will be doing a recipe at some point for chocolate buttercream. And when I have done that, it will appear here. But if there's no link yet, I haven't uploaded it yet. So let's get on with things. I know my cakes have come out of the oven, so I'm just going to prep this. And the first thing I need is a pint glass. So this is a kind of pint glass, but this is very, very handy. And I will tell you how. So, oops, she's just making a mess. I've got two of my trusty old silicon piping bags here well used but nice and clean and inside the packing bag i have put i think it's a wilton 2d nozzle i will put the link to the nozzle so you can see exactly what kind of one it is and this is what i do with the pipe glass i didn't even tell you did i just went straight i'm so used to doing it so the nozzle is in the bottom there and i've put that inside the pipe glass and put this over the edge because it holds your piping bag because if you're trying to spoon it through when it's on the table and it's going everywhere and it's getting on, oh, it's just a nightmare. So in a pint glass or a large, large glass is a large plastic glass, it just gives you that little bit more stability. So I've got a massive spoon here and I just literally dollop this in as best as I can. <laughs> right, there we go. Oh, So I'll probably get a couple of spoons in there because I will be doing some plain buttercream tops and then I want to show you something special. So let's see, that should be ooh, a bit too much in there actually. Let's give a little bit out. Ooh. There we go. So this will be fine for the plain buttercream ones. I'm just going to push it to the end and give it a twist and then just leave that to one side. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a different technique. Now this is going to be taking up a little bit of icing sugar. I suppose about that much would be fine actually. Just get that in there. There's not much left. So I've got to be cleverly frugal with it. Now my sugar flare cherry red gel colour. This is used by a lot of pro bakers like myself. Um, there are other brands available. Um, you can get sugar gel colours now in the shops instead of food colouring which doesn't have the same vibrancy and it's also a bit watery so it will water down your buttercream but this is a gel colour it's quite solid in there and you just need a toothpick to get what you need out now I do want this colour to be quite vibrant so I don't know if you can see how much is on that it's a fair old chunk in about that much of buttercream so I will show you why well, I want this to be so much brighter. I get my knife and mix it up because there is a method of doing buttercream which is really, really striking. So I need to have quite a strong colour. I don't even know if this is going to be enough. I might have to put some more colour again. It's really turned a really pretty, really pretty pink. You can use this with any colour, obviously, if you prefer purple or black um, or. You know, greens, blues, anything you fancy. But I want to have a really, really striking colour. Now that is quite a deep pink, but I still want it deeper. Just get some of the cream off there. It's all over me now. Oops. 
Um, if you're going to do it again, use another toothpick. Don't stick the same toothpick of sugar in there because it will make this rot. This is um, perfectly fine to survive for the time it says on the best before date, which is quite some time. They've got another big chunk. Um, but if you get sugar or food in it, it will start to go moldy and then you'll have to th throw the whole thing out. They're not hugely expensive, but they're not cheap enough that I'd be happy just dumping this and buying a new one. So my suggestion is use a toothpick. It's cheap, it's cheerful, it does the job. And then it's okay if you throw it away. Um, and I'm just going to try and make this into an even deeper think you can see it's getting really really strong there and because as I said it's a gel colour it's still keeping the same consistency and not going watery because I really need this consistency for this particular type of icing to work now this is becoming a really really bright pink and that's what I want and it sounds it, believe me trust me it's not going to be lurid we're not going to cover the whole cupcake with this although that said it could be pretty cool I think bright colours are really really in at the moment but i just want to make sure that it's all completely covered as i said i keep flinging the odd bit on the table but uh occupational hazard really need to try and twist this up as quickly as possible so i think i'll I'm just trying to think about i think i might put a bit more in with that little and often see so adding bits as you go don't just chuck in a whole ton i have some seen some people on bake off putting like a whole of this in their cake do not do that, please. Um, it doesn't taste when you use the amounts that I'm using. You can't really taste it at all. If you use the whole bottle, you will notice the taste. And depending on the colour you use, what goes in will come out. So uh, in the business, if you have a very, very strong blue colour on your buttercream or icing, you could become somebody who experiences what we call smurf poo the next day. So, you know, just be careful. I did once do um, a cake with a lot of black in, and you need a lot of super black. And with black, um, you have to try and get it darker with um, sort of cocoa and then use something called super black. And you do have to use a fair amount, especially things like buttercream which obviously starts off quite pale. So, you know, you're adding it. And um, I forgot to tell them that, because I did say to them, if you wanted that black, it will, you know, it'll it'll stain things if you've got to be careful. And I forgot to warn them that um, it, the color it goes in is the color it comes out. And uh, they were nearly going off to the doctors thinking that they had something seriously wrong. Uh, thankfully they were fine when I explained it and everything was fine after that. But yes, it, it can happen, so. But this is the beautiful fuchsia colour I was going for. I'm not quite sure if it's being picked up correctly by my phone in this particular under these lights. Um, but hopefully in the picture at the end, I will try and show you the colour as I'm seeing it here. Because I'm looking at it on the camera and it looks like really an orangey red when it is actually a beautiful fuchsia colour. So that is why I like cherry red because you can get this fabulous pink that is it's not a lurid pink as it might look over there it's actually a really beautiful uh, naturally looking fuchsia color pink like a like a fuchsia so i've got the dye on the table brilliant that's not what i need just a handy tip if you get dye on your hands like i have done um any cream cleaner like um uh, i think it, it used to be called jiff is it called sif now but it's a cream cleaner like that that's actually like white and slightly porous that will get the dye off your hands really well without damaging your skin too badly. Don't do it too often, obviously, because it's not best for skin. But if you've got like work the next day and you don't want to go looking like you've just um, fallen into a tub of Smarties, it'll get things off that way. And if you wipe it quickly off surfaces when they are on it, it'll wipe straight off. Um, otherwise, a tiny bit of bleach should do it. But be careful, test your surfaces before you use any bleach on them. Right, so that's that started. So now I'm going to show you. So I get my trusty cup, put the nozzle in, get this in there, and now what I'm going to show you is I get a great big clump of this, and I put it in there, and I just smear it up the edge. If you can see that down there, 
I just smear it all the way there and then I get another clump and opposite I smear all the way down there in this line as best as I can so it's like a line and then I do the same on the other sides now this doesn't always work out on the first one so you may find that it doesn't always behave as it's supposed to because it's quite tricky but what should happen is you should get a very nice effect on your buttercream as it comes out now it's really difficult because the tricky thing is when you put your buttercream in you have to sort of encourage it when you put the white buttercream in you've got to encourage it to go into the middle without taking the pink sides with it which is really tricky but if you can really put that there really emphasize the lines in your piping bag with a dinner knife as i'm doing i'll show you in a minute because obviously you can't see me poking through here you should be able to get, should be able to get uh, a fairly good uh, effect. So I'm just going to pop that there. I'll pop that on top there. I'll be using that again in a minute. Covered in pink. So I don't know if you can see now all the way through. I have tried very hard to kind of separate the lines. It's not thoroughly even, to be quite honest. Not very even at all. But you know, as I said, I've used this so many times, and it still does create a really nice effect um on a variety of different um colors i've used this for orange for a friend's um anniversary when her wedding colors were a beautiful orange gerbera and um it really really made the orange cupcakes incredibly striking for her anniversary party so i'm gonna now fill this up Ooh. Buttercream. Now I was going to say as well, because this buttercream is actually quite stiff, it's very stiff. If you're very quick, you can handle it and you could just plop it in like that. Most buttercream you can't do that with, but this is very thick buttercream. So if you can do that, as you can see, it really makes a difference and means you can get that effect quite well. So if I just pat that down there, that's kind of like the last of the uh, bit of the uh, pink in there. Fingers crossed, look at me, the state it's ridiculous. Fingers crossed, we will have, first of all, we'll probably have a very pink colour coming out. Let me just put it in this bowl. Let's be for a second. You will see the first colour to come out is pink. See the pink against my apron. But what you will also see, which I will show you, I'm just going to do this now. What you will also see is the stripes. Now it's a bit messy. The first first one you will pull out is always going to be messy because it depends which one's going to race it through the nozzle. But when they both hit the nozzle, then they both come out fairly equally with fairly equal pressure. And you can see already the beginning of a really, really gorgeous effect that is simple and striking. If you get the Wilton 2D nozzle and a decent piping bag, um, because this is a firm buttercream, I would strongly suggest a silicon piping bag because um, the plastic ones are sometimes not strong enough and as you're squeezing it, they can split. So, uh, I hope you can see that really well. Um, that's what we're going to be doing on the cupcakes, which are currently cooling. So as soon as they're cold, she says, adjusting herself, covered in icing sugar, um, I will get the cupcakes out and then um, I will ice them and show you how we do that. And then I will also show you what we do with the little sugar flowers at the end, which I've got on another recipe, how to make sugar flowers. Um, and you will understand how it all comes together to make a perfect, beautiful cupcake. See you in a moment. Hello my lovelies, welcome back. Excuse the dishevelled apron, but I've been cooking all day. I have the apron of a baker that is covered in icing sugar, so bear with me, please don't judge me. So what we've done now, if you'd watched any of the other videos, I've already done my cupcakes which are cooling. I have um, got a couple of issues on the cupcakes which I will show you how to get done because for some reason recently, um, a lot of people have been contacting me 
uh, with some concerns about their vapes and not knowing what to do and how to fix them. So I've cooked mine on a higher temperature to show you the problems you can have and how you can fix it. I would normally have done these 10 degrees lower at 150 degrees C in my oven, um, but I've done them at 160 because if you put it too high, you end up getting these little domes. And sometimes they're not always equal. I'll explain that later, but we are now going to do the sugar flowers. So I'm just gonna finish these off and show you what you can do. Um, I'm going to leave the pink ones as they are I really like them just playing with little uh, bits in the middle which they're still sticky because the glue's there um, and as I said we could have left them for a day or so and they would have been rock hard but because we're going to be putting them on buttercream it's going to be absolutely fine and I just want to show you a couple of techniques with the white ones now I have in here vodka neat vodka please do not panic that I'm using neat vodka to paint flowers which are then going to be given to kids the vodka evaporates so quickly and that is why bakers use it to put on the luster dust. Any cake you see with a, a colour dusting or a paint has usually been uh, watered down with a very strong alcohol because the alcohol will evaporate by the time you get the cake just leaving the dust. If we use water, water would soak into the sugar, make it all disgusting, make it run, make it sticky, make it horrible. So we need something that's going to go really quickly. So when you get these cakes, they are not alcoholic it will have completely evaporated by the time it's set and dried. So do trust me on this. Um, I'm just going to use a plain here. This is a gold sparkle. It's quite a pale one. If you want to use this on its own, you can use it just as a dry dust, putting it on a little, a little bit on a plate, getting a very fine brush. In fact, I've got one down here. Ugh! This is my special luster dust brush. It is super duper, excuse me, super duper soft. Um, and therefore it's very gentle. So you get, as I'm doing it, I can see bits of sparkle come. It's been clean, but hey, if you've ever dealt with glitter, you know how glitter just stays for life. So um, yeah, you could just sort of brush this on the flower and you get a very gentle blush effect. You can actually put, you know, you can also get luster dust in brush colors. I have some in some lovely pinks. So sometimes if I just want a gentle pink center to the flower, I'll do the luster dust. It creates this wonderful, beautiful spray ombre effect, like an airbrush. Um, and that is fine for that, but we want to have the colour a little bit more defined. I'm just checking. I've got, yeah, they're both gold sparkle. I have another one down there. I thought, oh, that looks darker, but it's not this light. So I'm going to put a little tiny bit in a ramekin. This, these ramekins we just had lying around, so anything really simple. A, a sauce would be fine as well. Um, so there's a little bit of this sparkle lust us. I will put the description in the link of this particular one I use, but. Once you've seen the one I use, you can obviously have a look around for other colours if you want something different. But this is in here and we don't need much vodka, just a tiny bit. So I'm going to use the brush to sprinkle it in because I just want to loosen up the uh, luster dust and make it into a little paint. I'm using quite a fine brush. Again, I will link to these brushes. They're just cheap normal paint brushes, but they're just excellent for cake making. So I keep dedicated things to cake making obviously these don't go and do any other painting and it's made it into kind of paste I don't know if you can see that down there it's just a sort of paste at the bottom and again this will keep evaporating because I'm using it so I may I may need to put some extra vodka in as I go but just to give you an idea if you wanted to add a little extra detail on these flowers what I would do is when they're drier just go around the edges with this paintbrush with the luster dust make sure it's not too thin if it is too thin you're not going to get a good color pickup because the luster dust will just be too watery on a plain white flower background and i'm just oops, just picking this up on the edge i will show you as i'm doing it i'm literally just going along the edges as delicately as possible it does not matter if it's a little bit messy i mean flowers in the wild Sometimes they're quite perfect, sometimes they're, you know, a little bit sort of rough and ready, but it's still nature and it's still beautiful. So I'll show you what I'm doing. I'm just doing the edges. It's literally just the edges. So I don't know if you can see that. It's just the edges that I've done. And it just, it just picks it up. So there we go. I've just done a couple of these. There's another one I'll show you and I'm not gonna bore you by doing them all. So 
once we've done these we could just leave them to go and keep sort of drying off the alcohol will evaporate really fast it's already evaporated from here so you can see that by using alcohol it does not hang about uh this has been five minutes and this is already just gone so i'm going to carry on with these and then when i'm finished i'm going to come back and buttercream these cupcakes and just talk to you a couple of issues that you might have with your cupcakes if you want to buttercream them and make them look really chanel and beautiful and things like that so i'll see you in a minute Ta -ta. so i'm going to show you so normally my cake would come out roughly something like this this is a nice flat well cooked cake it's slightly at an angle because my oven is uh, starting to fail which is not very good for a baker but you guys will at least accept me as i am um normally these would be nice and flat on the top and i will show you how the professionals do their buttercream so you have this cupcake just a little bit slightly risen at the top so i'm just going to take that off I say professionals this is how i do mine Right, so I've taken a little bit off. I'm just going to put that in there, my little thing. And you see, you've now got that here. What I would do with some spare buttercream that's not in the in the uh, piping bag is I just get it, pop it on top. This is just a plain dinner knife, nothing special, no fancy equipment. And I just do that, and I hold onto the edges of the buttercream case. And that bit I'm holding onto with my thumb. I get the knife and just scoop across and I do it all the way around a little bit of help a little bit more buttercream on there and I just scoop a bit more buttercream scoop scoop and that's it and now you have a totally flat cupcake with flat buttercream and then and then we go and add a swirl now <laughs> I'm going to try the pink one first, see how this comes out. Just get a bit more out of it. Oh, ooh, there we go. So with the swirl, you start in the middle and then you slowly go around the cupcake like this. And then you go around the edge of the swirl and then you stop. And I will show you what to do at the end of it. So if you're watching, I'll try and close up on this. Go to the middle, push, start to go around. Go round to the edge, keep going round, and then you've no more left to go and lift. And you will now see the effect I was talking about. How striking, how stunning is that? Absolutely gorgeous. Now, we have this little bit to contend with at the end. Ooh, let's pick it up. And this is exactly where my little flowers come in. I think the white one goes. The white one's striking enough. Okay, oh, yeah. how is that for an absolutely stunning, beautiful cupcake? Have a practice. You may not get your rose looking perfect the first um, time round. It is just amazing. Just a swell, a top, and a flower, and uh, obviously a beautiful cupcake. Now, people have been saying to me, "Let me get that one because it's quite high." A friend of mine had her cakes. They've come out and they've cracked. Um, these are the big cakes. I said just cut off the top and stack them as normal and it worked perfectly. She did an absolutely stunning cake. It was amazing. And sometimes cupcakes come out like that. And what it is, is because the heat is too high, the top sets, the middle hasn't cooked, the bubbles in the middle start to cook and then they push up and they're like, I've got to go somewhere and they burst through your cracked top of your cupcake and then they set. So you get this really weird top. Now don't panic. All is not lost. We just go round and cut that bit off, like that, so it's still flat. And these little bits of cupcake, cupcake bits left over, just eat them or put them in a freezer and when you get loads of them, make them into cake pops. So we've got our little dip there, but no one's going to see that because we're going to top it like a pro. And here we have the buttercream on the top, just going across, hiding all the sins. No one knows. No one has a clue. Your oven was too hot. You see, it's all sorted. No one knows. And we've got this beautiful flat surface to put that fantastic rose on. So now I'm going to do the plain one. We get the plain buttercream. It's just ordinary cream. So again, if you watch closely, and I will try and do a close up of it there so you can see a bit better. You can get your piping bag really, really tight. And then holding 
the twisted bit so you've got that secure enough you can back up and holding the main body bit now notice this isn't very full this is a huge bag but I'm only going to full that that much because you get a lot more control and if you have it too full it's just going to be all over the place and you know just want a little bit of control when you're starting this thing so it's really coming out because there's a lot of pressure stick that in the middle squeeze it till it comes out and then start to go around slowly taking your time go around the edge creating that beautiful rose and then when you get to the edge and you finish just pull away gently stop piping and they have another lovely rose now with this one we're going to use our pretty pink flowers so in this bit here as it's got that rough edge what i do so i get a few of these put them in the cap maybe pop a couple of the big ones around like that just at the top and bottom take that big one out doing that and sprinkle some more just around the top now you have to do this as soon as you've piped the buttercream because that's the only time it's sticky it just sets quickly get your flower stick it in the corner and there you have an extremely pretty little cupcake. Um, but yeah, so you have two different types. So all you have to do, I mean, if you want to watch it again, just rewind and watch them. I've done them quite slowly for both types. You can see this one is the one with the stripes that I put in originally. And this one is the plain one, both just equally gorgeous. Um, and both with a little flower on the bit that you lift up so you can hide all the sins. No one would know that one of these was too risen or it was an angle or whatever it is. It's just a brilliant way of disguising all the things you can and can't do. Practice with your swirls maybe in a bowl before you want to put it on a cupcake. Or if it does go wrong on a cupcake, and I've done that and I've done this and I've done the swirl, I've got that looks awful. I just turn it upside down. The swirl falls into the bowl with the rest of the buttercream and I just pat it down with a spoon so it doesn't get all dry. Cover the buttercream with some cling film as if you're not using it because it will start to set and get the crust on the top once it gets that it's really hard to kind of mix back up again and then just start again or you can even just flick it off scoop it up open the piping bag pop it in the piping bag twist it and go again the wonderful thing about topping your buttercream topping your cakes with buttercream rather in this manner means that you've already covered any crumbs any dodgy bits that you may see and so if the swirl of the cupcake isn't very good and you just do that all that happens is the swirl falls off and you can start again and you haven't destroyed your cupcake it is really that easy it is so forgiving um if you have any problems any issues and stuff please do let me know i really 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 um hope you've enjoyed the tutorials i've done for making beautiful tea time cupcakes fit for a patisserie um if you have any problems on queries do let me know if you manage to do these and um you've taken some photos i would love to see them i would love to see them and put them on my social media and say to everybody look how fab these are because you all seem to do some absolutely splendid work i'm so proud of all of you that have been in touch that have sent me photos honestly you are just fantastic and bloody fast learners i might say as well so Thank you for joining me. I really look forward to seeing you again soon for some of my other videos and uh, I will show you the finished product of all of these when I've done them. And uh, until my next video, take care darling and thanks for joining me. Bye.